Welcome back to another Goliath Getting Started Guide. Today we're taking the progress we made in the last video where you created an account using Goliath Console. And now we're actually going to put it on a piece of hardware and showcase that piece of hardware talking up to Goliath Cloud and we'll be able to see that. Mike, what does it take in order uh, to show this demo? What does the demo contain? So I really like the hello demo because it's like the smallest thing that you can do that shows you're connecting to the internet, you're talking to Goliath and you're sending a message, a hello message. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And it's not uh, quite as simple as a blinking LED because there is connecting to the internet involved. Obviously there's a lot of uh, stuff there. So what does it take to get between opening an ESP32 you might get in the mail and actually programming it? Right. So we already did part of it in the last video, which is to have an account on Goliath and to set up credentials, like a username and password for that device. But the other thing that you need is a tool chain in order to compile this. And uh, we did make a video on compiling this. If you want to see a video walkthrough, I'm just going to cover the highlights uh, right now. Uh, we need to install Zephyr and there are commands to go through for it. One of the things that I want to mention is we do recommend installing a virtual environment for your Python dependencies. And Chris will show that in just a few moments. Uh, you need to install the Zephyr toolchain itself and the Goliath SDK, all these commands take care of that. And then the last thing is the actual compiler toolchain for the ESP32. If you were using something different like the NRF91, we have instructions on installing uh, the compiler for that. But once you have these installed once, you can use them on all different projects and uh, it's basically, because Zephyr is so portable, it's basically uh, the same workflow no matter what hardware you're working on. Yeah, it's really, that is uh, quite a magical thing to be able to see it switching between an ESP32 board and STM32 board, you know, maybe an NRF52, all of these different things, they, uh, you know, they have basically the same guts internally. And uh, we're gonna show you how to build some of that stuff today. So the first thing we want to do is actually go ahead and locate the sample code, which you'll find actually inside of the tool chain that you already installed under the Goliath directories. And we're going to find the hello sample. Great. So I'm going to share my screen here now. Uh, oops. And here we go. So now I have a terminal and I store all of my code in Goliath, a folder called Goliath. You can put this wherever you'd like. And that's uh, in the the walkthrough and the, the different commands there, you could put this in there. Uh, so I put it into Zephyr project. And so this is the, the top level of the Zephyr install that you likely saw from the ESP32. So the first thing we have to do is go and actually activate the virtual environment like Mike mentioned. Like what is a virtual environment kind of at a high level? So you can think of a virtual environment like a little sandbox that you can install all of the Python tools that you need for a particular project without kind of disrupting or upsetting any of the other Python projects on your computer. And activating it means you're stepping into the sandbox and deactivating it means you're stepping outside of it. Yeah. And what this really, what this really means, the way I can tell that I'm not in a virtual environment is when I type West in, nothing happens if you're outside of the, if you've installed the whole tool chain in a virtual environment, and you're outside the virtual environment, you type West, it's gonna be like, I don't, I don't know what that is. That's usually the best indicator for me to see, I need to go and activate this virtual environment. Obviously I've shown here that West is working. West is the meta tool for basically building all this. And this is what we're gonna actually go and use here to build the hardware. I'm sorry, build the firmware image for the hardware. Uh, so let's go into the, uh, the, the Goliath folder that is contained within the Zephyr folder. So Goliath lives a little bit further down in this uh, modules lib Goliath. And this is what we call the SDK. And so this is basically, um, actually let me move this a little bit closer up the, uh, I can get it here. Here we go. Move a little bit further up the screen. So it's kind of in the middle of the screen here. Uh, so this is the Zephyr, S sorry, this is the Goliath SDK. And this is a lot of the things you'll see if you go to our Git, Git repository, you will see this same kind of code here. Uh, so we're gonna go and build the hello sample. If we look inside the samples folder here, you'll see all of the various examples that we have available on our uh, GitHub repository. So what's next, Mike? Well, I think the specific thing that we want to look at is a folder inside of the samples hello called prj.conf. 
And as you could guess, this is a configuration file. We need to tell this sample how to connect to the internet. In this case, it's going to be Wi-Fi credentials. And we need to tell it what the PSK ID and PSK, these pre-shared keys are like username and passwords. Uh, we need to tell those for the device that we're connecting. So you'll see there are already some things in this file that are telling it, hey, connect to Goliath and, and use this much for the stack and the heap. But down at the bottom, we can add these special directives. Uh, do you want to do uh, PSK and Wi-Fi, Chris? Sure. I'm going to just paste in kind of a uh, starter thing to make it a little bit faster, so I'm not factoring it. This this is basically a demo network that I have. It's just a you know a guest network in my home lab here. But I wanted to show this is where PSK ID, like Mike mentioned, this is where we're going to paste this in from the Goliath console. And so this is a device that I created. I'm going to go and copy the identity. This is PSK ID. Put this into here. And then I'm going to I'm going to take a risk here, Mike, and I'm going to share my password with everyone. Your here. super secret password? Ooh, blinky, blinky is life. life. That's a good one. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to hit Control X. I'm in. I use Nano for editing. Uh, so let's get out of here. And so now we have the PRJ.com. Basically, we have. My Wi-Fi credentials in here, and we have the Goliath credentials, so that once we program this board, it should be able to hop onto the network. Let's take a look at this uh, this uh, board that I created here. Add it to the stream. So this is the very very live uh, <laughs> version of the board. It's really not going to light up any LEDs. This is just a board I put together for uh, future demos, or if you see the old LED demo that I created. Uh, so we're still using this thing here. But if we go back to uh, here should be able to see now we're gonna go and build it right so i think we do need to set up one set of build variables for the esp32 and yes, uh there's actually a helper command that installs the esp32 tool chain you would have done this if you followed our, our video example or our docs and chris is going to use that again to as a helper to get the magical incantations we need down at the bottom here yep so basically these two, this is going to now say, well, there's a slightly different tool chain for Espressive. This is likely changing in the future, but this is just saying, okay, go and use that slightly different tool chain that you've already installed using this command. And now we yeah, should if be you're building for a here. virtual device or building for like STM32, those are just natively part of Zephyr, the compilers are. And I know that uh, Espresso has been working hard to get their compilers in included. So I, I do think soon this step won't be needed. We'll be remaking this video within within months, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, so now we should be good to go, right? Build. I'm gonna and so Chris is just calling the meta tool. It's, he's telling it to build. The dash B flag is going to give it the architecture of the board that he's using. Uh, in this case, he's using the dot because he's saying the directory I'm in right now is where the code is. So use use this code. Uh, and then he sets it off and it runs. One thing to know about, like Mike mentioned with doing it in a particular directory, um, one thing that was very confusing to me when I got, was getting started with Zephyr is that you can basically build, you can have a build directory kind of anywhere. You can actually even set it on the command line if you'd like to. Uh, I think, you know, following our tutorial directions is going to be your best case scenario, but you're going to start seeing these patterns of kind of like sample folders and kind of a similar pattern all over the directory structure. For instance, we're showing the Goliath uh, example code right now, but there's also a bunch of Zephyr example code. Like if you were just building a Blinky example, there'd be a, a separate directory there and you can build them in either one. That was really confusing to me at first, but like I said, following the directions are probably going to be your, your best bet at getting started here. And it looks like okay. we had a successful build, Chris. Nice job. Thanks. Thanks. The directions <laughs> help, and having you as a reference <laughs> also helps. All right. So West Flash should kick this thing off, making sure no other devices are plugged in here. But there is a uh, set of hardware on ESP32 boards that allow it to natively start a uh, flash cycle. There's no uh, bootloader uh, set up natively. Uh, so it just is going to go and detect if there's anything plugged into your USB ports. Um, if you have a different board out there, you might have to do a different set of commands, or if you're using a bootloader, it might be a little bit different there. Okay, uh, so now I wanna do 
screen. Dev. USB zero. Now I'm basically just going and opening a, a serial terminal. And I reset my board so we get to see all of the uh, startup commands here. That should show us all of the various things happening here as it's connecting to Wi-Fi and validating onto the network. All right, and it has connected. That first one said fail to send hello, but it actually was just kind of working itself out and getting to that, uh, that first, first step there. But now we are basically, we're incrementing every five seconds, we're incrementing uh, a counter and sending that to the Goliath uh, console. And we can actually go into the log view of the console. This is a really great feature if you're developing something, especially if it's headless, is you can send all of the log messages that you want over the network and have them recorded onto Goliath. That's right. And because I had it already set to auto refresh every one second, we can see that it's already been tracking and you can see it's actually every time a new one comes in, it's checking. So about every five seconds or so, you see a new one come in and it's just incrementing to the next, uh, the next message that's being put onto the Goliath cloud using Zephyr logs, which are tied into the Goliath logging service. So, so I will often start from this app when I'm doing development, Chris, because it gives me that confirmation that like, yes, you have your Wi-Fi password correctly. Yes, you have the device pre-shared key and key ID correctly. And yes, we're seeing the logs come onto the network. I think once you get over that uh, hurdle to get cloud connected, everything else is kind of a traditional embedded problem. That's right. Yeah, I think even without a serial terminal, you could in theory start to see a lot of stuff, but having a serial terminal is uh, like a, a warm security blanket for me. So, you know, so still seeing it locally and then also validating on the cloud. I think that's a, a great combination to really kind of sanity check the setup, like you said. Now, if you want to learn more about this, you can certainly come and ask us questions on our Discord server, which you're going to find at goliath.io forward slash Discord. You can post other questions on our forums at forum.goliath.io. And of course, our documents that you can use to follow through this entire process are at docs.goliath.io. That's right. And we will have more examples here. We'll be going through the other sample code that we have in our SDK. We'll be showing it on various devices, not just the ESP32. We have a wide variety of different hardware that Goliath works on. Uh, one of our other favorites is the NRF91, which is a cellular based device. So we'll be showing some of that. We're actually in the process of reworking many of these videos. So you can see some of the past videos that have been made. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notices whenever a new one is coming up. That's all for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.